name is David Ellis. I work in um, contact sports, music, and um, poetry. I grew up in North Carolina. I painted tobacco barns, tobacco warehouses, chicken houses, and, uh, and a, a couple like discotheques and shit in the nearby town of Sanford. I was kind of always interested in doing things outdoors that people would see. Cause that was, I mean, look, to a town of 270 people, tobacco farming town, you, they had no galleries. You know, but like, I, I wanted to put stuff up by the side of the road so when the school bus would go by, you know, my friends would be like, oh, wow, there's another one. I think I first started doing motion paintings because I would document the paintings in the studio with a little camera. I was doing it with a Super 8 camera in school. So I would, it was filmed, but I would take one picture, work on a painting a little bit more, and then take another picture. And um, I was doing it more. I don't think I was thinking of it so much as making a film as making it like recording the recording the changes because um, I would change the painting a lot you know like I would just I guess I, I was just trying to recycle the stretchers and the panels and canvases because well they were expensive and I didn't feel like I was doing anything that good so I, I would just go over it. The paintings are the result of like a process of like collecting data from phone bills to like you know something you found in a book that gave you an idea to like drawings to whatever and I keep these in boxes and um, that spans a certain period of time. It also like kind of dates the pieces for me because I can see references to other work and places I've been. They end up being the background so that it forces me to like collaborate with myself. I have to make a choice. As I'm being spontaneous, I have to decide like how much I'm gonna cover and what I'm gonna read. And it, 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 to me, it's a more challenging way of working. The black and silver, it's usually black and silver. Um, it's kind of become my um, freestyle visual rapping, you know? So they're improvisational, but there is some decision-making that goes on. So, so that, the result of the flow stuff is basically evidence of this ongoing process. But to me, I still look at it as something that spans time. Then with the, the kinetic work, the sculpture, we'll call it kinetic sculpture, it's also kind of an ongoing exploration. And I've been doing a lot with like discarded materials, you know, paint buckets, trash, you know, trash, debris from the studio. You know, stuff that you find in the landscape in Brooklyn and wherever you go. Um, so the idea is to actually just use found objects the way Duchamp would do and, and, and arrange them together so there's a story. It's like a city trash can you might see in Brooklyn or somewhere, um, but a little bit newer so it didn't look completely out of space in the gallery. And then it's filled with like actual stuff that I collected over six months or so and instead of throwing it out I, was, I would select them for like okay this sounds this paint bucket sounds good it's a nice like tom or you know this can of jalapenos has a really nice cowbell sound and i have them you know i store them and then when it comes when, it, when i'm ready to assemble them i, I make a piece um, by arranging them and in this case i've collaborated with roberto carlos lang who's a composer he's an artist in his own right he's a he's a um, musician who tours under many different monikers. The guy's prolific, um, but, but what I like to do is actually concentrate more on the, the visual part of it and the sound, you know, the, the way the thing sounds, but like basically I feel like I'm creating like a drum kit. I'm creating the palette and what, what's happening visually for me and then kind of like passing the ball to Roberto who slam dunks it by writing a track for it. So the, we talk about how it might work in a gallery, how there'll be pauses and how there'll be like rhythmic parts that you could dance to, how there'll be parts that are a little more organic, like there's a, maybe there's a rat running through the trash can or something like that.
And there's three films in the show. Bob Floss, um, OK, and Animal. Basically filming every seven seconds or so as I'm painting over the course of you know, a span of time. It could be a week, it could be a month. And uh, these are actually basically solo, solo films that came out of this process, motion painting that I did earlier with, um, with collaborators. So I would paint something one day and then I'd invite a friend to the studio, they would go over the work. Another friend would come the following day, go over that work. And then the, basically at the end of the day, we painted white or throw it out. And the, the result is actually just this recording of the painting process. My name is Chris Cooksey and I work with mixed media assemblage. So I use um, a variety of materials ranging from model parts to religious figurines to toys, chess pieces, uh, wood decorative appliques, uh, trim molding, crown molding, sand, snails, seashells, yeah, cheap jewelry. Anything. I like to relate the human psyche and what everyone is thinking throughout the day. There's always some conflicting thoughts, there's always some inner turmoil going on. And so, what I wanted to do with my work is relate that in a visual element. And so, we can relate to inner conflicts and sort of things dealing with our own past and childhood, uh, all the worries that we have, all the stories that we've made up about ourselves, everything that has some sort of psychological component or construct to who we are. And I guess that those being the tools that are out there in the material world just lent well to making these pieces. Well, as a teenager and even younger, I was always into Legos, model building, really into building things. But I also painted and, and liked to draw. And I went to art school for painting, essentially, but uh, somehow sculpture was always just this innate thing that I needed to do. And so with all these leftover things from my adolescence, I started, just on a whim, just started gluing them together, making arrangements, and that's kind of the spawn of how these things came about. Uh, but it wasn't until maybe 2004 that I revisited it and really took off with it. And the galleries have had such an interest in it, and there's been a lot of demand, and a lot of collectors purchased the work, and so it's really been a, uh, a blast just evolving the whole process. It just gets more complex more out of control. The major elements of it, I sort of plan out, think about, sketch out, whatever. But I'd say that the secondary elements to it uh, is a very improv sort of situation. So I establish the primary forms, the larger forms, then everything else from there sort of evolves on its own, grows. So it's basically big to small. I hunt for any place that looks like it needs something. And so I get down to the one last little area that, you know, oh, that, that, that's boring right there. So I put something on there and I think, ah, oh, it's done. I'm ready to paint it, ready to go. And I, I never can seem to remember the last thing I glued onto a piece. The 
you know, if I have everything with me, it doesn't take that long. But I never have everything I need. So I get to a certain point and I think, oh, I need, I need this particular thing. Unfortunately, that's three hours away in some other town. But I'm going to drive there and get it just because I'm so obsessed with it and I need it. So I'll go and do that and come back. And it all adds into the time. You know, the time collecting is a part of it. But if you actually clocked the amount of time in front of the piece, it's not that long, but I guess it's not really relative to everything else. And painting it, painting it at the very end is like a fraction of that time. So it's certainly, um, certainly a process. Reign of Caesar is certainly different from anything else I've done. Not only in the way that it looks visually, it's more top heavy than what I've done before, but it also incorporates this movement of flight. It also relates to ancient Rome. There's a bust of Julius Caesar at the top. It also relates to the modern world. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a blend of everything, and there's you know, smaller, repetitious forms of the larger form and at a smaller scale. Uh, a lot of anguish and power. There's a lot of emotion going on, certainly. There's a lot of uh, hierarchy. Uh, and that's really relevant in the scale the difference between all the figural forms. But I, I do think that that's uh, a good example of, you know, one what I really feel a good unique connection to.